Jones. What's going on, sister? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> doing well, doing well. We, you know, we, we were chopping up. We're talking about some barbecue offline, not really hot chicken. <laughs> uh, but uh, we I, were though. <laughs> exactly, we were. <laughs> you know, we're like, what the, but um, I, I am so I, I I've been excited about this conversation. I was telling her offline one because you know I'm one of those people when people ask me, I'm a, I'm a film head. I'm a film music head, you know, and all that good stuff. And um, growing up, people always ask me, what was the favorite, what was my favorite movie of all time? And they don't get it when I say, you know, Jackson's American Dream, the little mini series, right? You don't even remember that? So, you know, no. so that, oh my gosh, with Angela Bassett. Oh, see, I'm going to send you a copy. We're going we're gonna to change this. But Please. Um, it Please. is an amazing movie. But it, one of the things that it did for me early on was really give me an illustration of what it looks like to be in a musical family. Um, and then oh. for, you know, for, for the, you to actually see the reality of what that looks like, the mission for the world, but also for those who go on individually and work with it, it just gave me a whole other picture of a world I didn't understand. And, you know, yeah. you know, I think individually, I was introduced to you individually, Rick, Rick Reynolds, uh, track. And, you know, I just said like, wow, I kind of st started going back because I didn't grow up listening to, uh, to, to gospel until high school. And then getting introduced to Forever Jones, getting introduced to this. So uh, this is a great, great, great honor to speak with you because I think your approach and how you view music, how you view your story, I think is relevant for the time. And so um, I can't do a perfect soliloquy of all your stats, uh, even though I memorized them. But who is Doe Jones? Uh, I'm still finding that out, mm. you know, that's what I've, I've realized in this season is, um, humans don't realize how much of a deep well they are, mm. um, how much self-discovery is going to be incorporated into their entire life's journey. Um, we even sometimes think we're going to somehow grasp it at one point and be like, this is it. This is who I am. This is who I'm going to be. But life is a constant journey of um, being metamorphosized, um, being changed, being challenged, deciding how you're going to change. Um, change is inevitable, but you do get to decide how um, certain things and trials will change you. And so I feel like in this moment, I am the most genuine and real that I've ever been. And I like myself. And, uh, and I want people to, to get to that place. Um, because when you get to that place, then you're able to really um, hand over, boldly hand over your characteristics and all the parts that you are to God and say, use them. Mm. You know, and oftentimes we do that with fear because we don't want to accept ourselves and who we've become and the things that have um, shaped us into who we are. And, um, so that is who Doe Jones is. And Doe Jones is a creative, um, quirky, you know, all over the place sometimes, um, very sensitive human being. Um, and this is all I have to offer the world. And so my assignment is finding a way to, uh, allow God to express himself through all of those characteristics. Mm. I appreciate how you answered that question. And, you know, it, it, I don't think it's, it's just by happenstance that you actually started answering a question thinking about other people and how they could be served by where you, yeah. how you understand the journey of life and how you're just consistently trying to discover who you are. And then you kind of ended with like, all right, who I'm creative, I'm quirky, I'm this, you know, I, I think that says something. And it, I think it's something to, to that, I think drew me around a number of the conversation and interviews and things I've heard. There's just a sensibility to the the impact your music is having, what you want the story to do, how you want it to serve. Um, but I have to actually like just even start in the beginning because I I think we take for granted, you know, when I think people think of quote unquote traditional paths in in life, right? You know, we take yeah. for granted in those paths how much faith it takes to just say this is my assignment, not look left or right and just be so clear on it and say, all right, God, you're going to provide for me for the rest of my life. And this is what I'm supposed to do. But then I think when you're in a creative space, <clears throat> you know, um, as like God is the greatest creative of all time, but now you're in this creative space, that's also a big deal. And it takes a lot of faith to be able to say that, especially being so young 
um, you know, and, and doing so. And so I, I want you to take me back to Washington State <laughs> and just the vibe in your house, like as early as you can remember, you know, one, just how you were able to cultivate this understanding of like, oh, wow, this is I'm good at this. I'm creative. Right. Because, you know, so much of your 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 skills, they're self-taught. You know, like, like you taught yourself the, the, these instruments. So just tell me, just what was the dynamic in the home that kind of cultivated that? Because obviously you're coming from a musical family, but just talk me through just what you remember of your home. Um, You know, my dad is a man of prayer. He's a pastor. And um, the Lord spoke to him and said, I want you to meet with me every morning at 9 a.m. There was just something special about the 9 a.m., and so as little kids, he would bring us into the presence of God every summer when we're not in school. Um, and then when we were in school, finding ways to meet before school as a family. And um, also we were musical, so he would put instruments in our hand. Mm -hmm. And he'd say, when we get here, we're going to play before the Lord. They would put chopsticks in my brother's hands and lay pots and pans out, you know, when they were little boys and then, you know, bought a drum set and, you know, mom and dad just really um, invested in our passions. And so we grew up in a house of prayer. Yeah. Uh, my mother is, a, is an intercessor. I have memories of, which I feel like you probably do too. I don't know your life story and I'm not trying to be prophetic, but <laughs> I feel like, you, I don't know why. I feel like you would understand. I have memories of my mom we waking up in the middle of the night or rolling over and, and uh, feeling her hand on my forehead mm -hmm. and hearing her praying over me. Mm -hmm. And um, so just like, I just grew up in that. And then both sides of my family were musicians or um, musical. And they didn't, I grew up with really great singers. Like my mom's baby sister is Yvette Williams. She's the voice of For Every Mountain with Kirk Carr, Ooh, Sanctuary. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yep. She's insane. Yeah. So we grew up around that, you know, and, and having people be hard on us, you know, and, and be like, you're, I'm just trying to sit at the table and sing a song that's in my head. Um, my grandma feels like I'm singing out of my nose and turns into a full blown, you know, voice lesson. And um, that's just, you know, that's my life. And I'm so thankful for it. The older I get, the more thankful I am for, uh, I get, I don't know why I'm getting emotional right now, but the more thankful I am for just, um, you know, the people that God gave me to. Mm. Um, so mm. I'm not saying it was perfect, but it was what I needed. Mm to become so mm. that's yakama no nah, this that, that it, 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 uh, i appreciate um this and also appreciate this how vulnerable you are about that and you know about your story yeah I, I i'm always so intrigued about the beginning for everyone right in everyone's story but i think in particular i just think we live in this time where there's this tension uh, particularly around uh, you know parents relationship to their children and the things that they yeah. cultivate, right? And so sometimes now there's, I just hear this overwhelming of like, I, you know, I didn't do anything. I didn't guide them at all. Like I want them to discover everything too. Like it's also yeah. a dance. Like, okay, yeah. you know, it'd be nice for them to explore this. And, but I'm also going to give them space to figure out what they enjoy. And so I just think this, 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 there's this like faithful medium Right. Because, you know, I think people assume that, you know, people are like, oh, my gosh, you took my choices away. Why did you make me a musician? It's like, no, there was an anointing. There was a call of that. And so I think that's re refers to from from a faith perspective. You know, though, I think that the natural question would be then, even as you're cultivating your 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 musical abilities. Right. You know, you 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 taught yourself the piano, got your core game. Yeah. <laughs> you know, touch the, 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 you, you, I call it like the Hendrix style. I always loved music. Like I always had a passion for it. That's one of the, the ways that you know that like your kid or you, um, <clears throat> have a passion for something is you <laughs> get frustrated when it's not done right. <laughs> or, yeah. right. You're, you, maybe you're not saying this out loud, but you're sitting there watching and you feel like I, this is, I need this. I could do that you know, and this is how it should be done or, or 
um, when given the opportunity, you just see the spark or the gift on someone. You can see that they have the passion for it. I was that kid that had the passion for it. I was asking mom and dad if I could stay up late so I could play the piano just five more minutes, you know. <laughs> of course, I'm not. To sleep. <laughs> I, I ain't doing that now <laughs> as a grown woman. <laughs> uh, but I was doing it then, you know. And um, so I just, I think we all knew that I was going to sing uh, solo. I have this memory of being at a camp meeting and this pastor, like, I'm like 12 years old. And I know the Lord opened my eyes to really see and understand this message. Like how, how was, how did I understand this message at 12 years old? But he taught on pride. And I remember up until that point, I just knew I was going to sing. And I, I had like a plan B and I was like, if God doesn't do this for me, then I'm going to um, go secular, you know, which is the, what we, the way, what we called it back then. I know people call it mainstream, everybody. And I was like, I'll just go secular, you know? And, and the Lord dealt with me in, and, uh, and I got to a place at 12 years old where I was like, God, if you call me to uh, be an usher for the rest of my life, I'll value that just the same as singing before thousands um, because obedience is the same across the board for you. And I gave my shoes away and I just was a mess leaving that camp meeting. But that was like, God really setting my heart in a, a place to where um, he held it at that age. And then just as I grew up, um, I, I just knew at some point I was going to go solo. It wasn't like I was separate. And everybody in my family knew, you know, that I really had this burning passion to sing and uh, and the gift for it. And um, probably in 2018 is when I really jumped off the cliff and, and said, I can't... Um, if I'm, I can't um, be paralyzed by fear. I got to jump off and, and watch and see if these wings work. Mm. And I did. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I want to press in a little bit more because I think there's one thing to recognize that people could sing. I think most people, whether they, you know, grew up around musicians or not, they kind of like, okay, that person could sing and they probably have a gift and call, but this, it's just not singing. It, you, you as a writer, a songwriter, at what point did it kind of become clear that, you know what, I, that this, my songwriting is also a really key part of this gift that God has given me. Yeah. I was never organized or consistent enough to keep a journal book. Like I was going <laughs> to You kept it real? <laughs> You're like, nah, man. <laughs> I tried for years and then, you know, I've, I've grown, but mm -mm. anyway, I think, you know, I would have dreams mm. of, and wake up with songs and it was just like, yeah. Uh, and, and like, I would express and understand life a little bit better when it was in a song for me. Mm. Um, because I'm one of those that can sing it better than I can say it sometimes. Mm. Uh, and I know I've grown in my communication abilities, but, um, Sometimes putting the truth repetitively in a song mm. just helps helps me understand the bottom line. Mm. And I think it helps people understand the bottom line, right? Mm. Um, so I think I was always, yeah, I was always just like writing, writing songs. I remember I had a crush on this, um, I had a crush on this person, what was it, uh, it was a TV show, a character from a TV show. And uh, and I wrote a song to him asking if he would marry me. And uh, <laughs> I woke up and I sang it to my cousins. They will never let me live that down. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> but I did that. Like, that was like full on dough, you know, so. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it's, it is interesting, you know, how I think, um, I, I'll call just accepting yourself, right? I think you, we started off the conversation where you were just talking about that we're all on this journey, we're all discovering, you know, you know who we are. But I, I think as I even get, you know, later in life, oh my goodness, you know, time has flown. Just the the the, the act of accepting. There's parts where you like I need to grow in versus there are parts when you like I just accept that this is the way things are. This is the way I've been gifted to be, you know. I think for people who may not this has been walking in faith for for a long time or just are still curious about God, tell me about what that experience is like. Just even accept and say, "This is not the way the way I play this instrument. This is the way I, I communicate. I, I'm not really good on the journal and writing." You know, was it just always just a sureness that you always felt to say, "Like, all right, this is the way it's going to be. I'm not going to change it." You know, like it just seems like you there's a sense of just sure, your assurance that you have. <laughs> 
around just yourself. You know, you know, like this is how I approach it. This is how I sing. Like, talk to me about that. Yeah. Well, today I'm assured in myself. Um, <laughs> I think every every day is, you know what I mean? Every day is different as you learn and grow. But um, I, I think it's more so just that as a young girl, I just, I had it. And I had to learn patience. And I had to learn, I just had to learn and grow. But when I got around more writers, like now, I'm probably, I get more nervous now, right? Writing songs, people around me, they pick it apart. They're, and they rightfully so, you know, like I'm, I write a song and I'm like, this is a masterpiece. And then I play it for someone else. It's almost like too, like hearing a song by myself that I wrote, it's going to sound like a masterpiece. But even hearing it and watching someone else and watching it be communicated to them, even before they say anything, I'm like, oh, you know what? This does not translate. <laughs> and I'm really sad mm. that I, you know, I'm really sad that I <laughs> show them this song. But it's a growing moment, you know. So I think, you know, that's the thing. When you get older, it's like the kids who are like the best football player in their city when they're in high school mm. and they're like oh I'm the best and then they go to college where everyone is gifted and everyone has worked hard to get there and they meet people who are gifted and they worked hard and they're mm. skilled you know what I'm saying mm. and um and so that's been my journey I'm like now I'm around like songwriters that do it for a living and and I'm rubbing shoulders with people who are like and not that I was around that with my family as mm -hmm. well you know, but um, being around people that are that I've never met before, I'm getting in a room with them, and you know, it can be really intimidating. Mm. Um, but but I've had to take on the persona and and um, and put on this robe of like I'm supposed to be in this room, mm. and if I don't if I don't tell myself that, then all of me won't be unveiled. The parts mm. of me that are needed to write a beautiful song won't be presented. Uh, in that moment. So mm -hmm. anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's a word I for somebody. Say, that's a word for somebody. It is, yeah, <laughs> it is. You and you just gotta fake it um, until you start believing it about yourself. I that I belong here. I wouldn't be in this room if God didn't open this door for me. I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be here. If you don't believe that, and if you don't, um, you know, act like you believe that until you actually believe it. You know what I mean? Or start declaring that over yourself then, you know, it's just going to be a little bit harder to, to open up in that writing session. So I hope that answers your question. No, no, that answer the question is like massively, I, I, you know, it, it's one, on one sense that you kind of are, you articulate just the faith journey of just growing and being sure about what you're putting down. But at the same time, also saying that that's part of the process. And as you grow, you're going to be challenged and it's vulnerable. Oh, yeah. It makes it, it makes it better. Yeah. I think I'm thinking about these times that we're living in now. And um, I think just for the fact that people have been isolated, right? And it, this is evergreen. So I think this is timeless for people to hear. But I also think that creatives also operate in a different space, right? Um, musicians, yeah. a lot of times in your head, sometimes just really have to befriend isolation, silence. And so I'm, I'm, I'm almost wondering just from, a, from, from a, your relationship with God, how do you make sure that you remain healthy? right in the time where you need creative space to be you need space and isolation to kind of be creative while at the same time there's also like a need you need for people and, and so like how have you balanced that over time growing up there's one thing because you had a house that was full but now at this stage of your career how do you i don't want to say balance but how do you find equilibrium well, like how do you do that and still remain healthy yeah i am uh, my answer is not going to be a secure one because I'm figuring that out right now. Mm. Up until this point, community has been like built into every decision I made, everywhere that I moved, it was to serve at a church. And um, so for the last three and a half years, mm. um, I'm like, in this place to work, like I lived in Dallas for two years and I started to build community. It was like really great. And, uh, and now I'm in Nashville, and um, I know the only way for me to really be healthy is to have healthy community. And um, and I know I'm going to push for a healthy relationship with God, you know, alone. I know that I am. 
um, and being an introvert too, right? Um, I think I can, I, I've already been befriended isolation or like quiet time with me. Like that's already my best friend. So <laughs> I, yeah, my favorite friend and I love people. Um, but there's just a certain type of rejuvenation that happens for me when I'm alone and others, it's the other way around. Right. Yeah. So I'm having to be intentional in this moment. You know, I've had somebody ask me the other day or last night, you know, let's go out for coffee. I was at an industry um, party and, you know, my pastor was like, Hey, we're having prayer tonight. I slipped out there so that I could be with him for a second because I'm just trying in every moment to build family, to build community and to figure out what that looks like for me. And I think it's ne it's never going to look the same for every person. It's different because everyone's pace is different, but my faith journey right now is to have the faith that God will build community around what he's calling me to do in this moment. Mm. And yeah. And that just because I'm not, um, in one place, uh, at a certain part of the week, every time, you know, my life is like this. <laughs> I want to go say that it's like this. I want to say that, but that's too consistent. Yeah. This is what he's doing right now in my life. And he's going to show me how to balance it all. The end of the deal is to obey. His end of the deal is to be faithful, to do everything he said he would do and to support and to use you for his glory. Mm. This, the, yeah, I, I don't, I, I think always, I use the word matter of fact, right? You know, the way you, you and you, commu yeah. you communicate yeah. like this sureness. I think that's just for me, the, the, the theme of, you know, things are not always perfect here. You know, I'm trying to find a balance of what it means to obviously honor how God has designed me and enjoying my time alone, but also seeking and being intentional about community at the same time. I also recognize I'm not the finisher of this thing. <laughs> so... You know, so in each case, it's on God's path that he's going to, um, as I step into what he's called me to do, he will surround me because we were made for community. And I, I just think that it, yeah. it's a very resonant in this time. And I, you know, I think I, I, I only bring this up and I think people in general, when they think about gifting and particularly for musicians, I think there's a lot of times it comes with worry, right? Because we've seen so many marvelous musicians often have real deep personal and private struggles mentally, right? Um, you know, because they're in that space beyond life. And so it's always interesting to look about what does that look like? How do you guard against, how do you protect, you know, or how do you allow God to protect you at least in, in, in those moments? Yeah, I, 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 wanna, I wanna actually push this question though. In building community, as someone who has done so much great work and, and doing more great work and putting such great music out into the world, how, how do you navigate relationships with people, right? And I'm, I'm talking about, you know, from a discernment standpoint of like, you know, I think I, I think about a number of athletes and people who I know professionally where they're just sometimes there's a little paranoia around why are you here? What's going on? All that. What's been that walk with you? And how do you kind of allow God to help sift <laughs> out, you know, who should be around you uh, from a discernment standpoint? I feel like it's um, it's a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. I my journey also includes um, being raised in the South and realizing God helping me realize this. This actually ties into one of the songs on my EP. Mm -hmm. God helping me realize that one of my issues with performance-based mindset um, was established in a moment of pain that I didn't realize was a moment of pain. Mm. Um, but it, it, it was that, you know, I went to this church with incredible pastors who covered and protected me as much as they could. Um, and the church was um, white and, and there was, you know, uh, people of color in there, mixed in there, some here and there. Um, but because you're, we're in the South, one of the largest, larger things that they struggle with is racism and prejudice. It, just, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. That spirit 
lives uh, freely down there. And I know God's putting his finger on it in all of America. But down there is is a place where um, people really need deliverance. And I have to say it that way because we want to act like <laughs> people just were born and chose to hate. But that's not true. Um, and so anyway, I, I was around a lot of people that um, were nice to me. In, within the walls of the church and would say, we love you, your family, if you ever need anything, blah, 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 blah. And then I would see them out and they would switch up, right? It was a mm-hmm. totally different story. And so, um, and so I had to, I didn't realize this, but, but I was buying love with performance because people were tolerating me because of my gifting, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so I didn't, I didn't, I know it's so, it's so deep, but I didn't know that it affected me the way that it affected me during ministry things. You don't walk through them. Cause you're like, we gotta keep going, you know? And, um, so anyway, God has started to uncover this fear of, do these people really love me or are they tolerating me because of my gifts? It has mm. infiltrated it way into its way into every relationship, right? And if you don't deal with stuff, it will be the lens that you see life and relationships through. And so as God has delivered me from that and helped me to forgive people, I mean, God's so gracious. There are grudges we don't know we're holding. We don't even know we're holding it, you know, until this, this spirit of God is like, hey, this is in your heart and I want you to walk freely and I want you to forgive. Um And so that's been like a, a theme right now in relationships. And I lived talking about this the other night about a certain person. Like, you know, I you know, I wonder if if they're gonna not be as present in my life once this once we're done with this project. You know what I mean? Because it's someone that I really feel connected to. And the Holy Spirit was instantly like, change the channel. Do not go there in your mind give you we've got to give people the benefit of the doubt in the kingdom right Mm. and allow god to give us discernment in the moments where he's wanting to give it to us but sometimes we think sometimes we mix fear and discernment Mm. and cynicism (laughs) and discernment right (laughs) because we're wounded because we're wounded or we're healing i should say that because we're healing and and god's like "I, i really have i have this portion of the abundant life for you to live in relationships but you got to rid yourself of fear you have to allow me to heal you Mm -hmm. and it and that part is a decision and um and so it's been interesting you know I I think it's disappointing when you allow someone to prove you know or to show you who they are Mm -hmm. um and maybe they don't meet your expectations that you have to release them and realize that you don't know the whole story and, and also like, sometimes it ain't that they don't want to be your friend. Sometimes it's that God hasn't called you to be in deep relationship with them. You know, have you ever had those friendships that like just happen supernaturally? Mm-hmm. And it's like, this is a God thing. And I'm really glad that they're in my life. You know, on the other side of that, there are relationships that don't happen supernaturally. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. yep. And you just have to trust the Lord. So that's another thing that I'm still figuring out because I'm like healing. And 2020 brought all of that up and because I wouldn't have known, you know, that I wouldn't have, I would have known that I was seeing life through that lens unless God, you know, finished the, finished what he started with that journey. Mm. You, you know, I, I think it's, it's putting a mirror back. Um, that, that is gold. I think for people, um, and I, I think that 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 shows up in regards of what your career is. I think there are people who, you know, I think that's part of what makes God appealing for many people, right? It's that one place where even for family, right? Now, no one has yeah. perfect families, but even still, there, there's that dynamic of performance. I want to make my dad proud. I want to make my mom proud, and will they be upset? And this. But God is that one place where, you know, from the promises and from what has been done and what has been said and what has been accomplished and achieved at the cross and beyond, that um, yeah. I'm good here, not because of what I will perform as, but because of the performance of someone else on my behalf. And so I, I just think that that's going to free some people up 
I also just say that I'm looking forward to the Dow Jones book, uh, books that you will have coming out. <laughs> you know about that. Let me not get you off your square, but I'm like, you know, you know, I just this is just a brother encouraging his sister to say, hey, you know that. I, I just think that that's such a needed perspective, though, and I and, yeah. I, and I and especially I navigate in this world of community building and relationships. I think that is that is understated. Um, I I, I, I do I think well, as as we, as we kind of are rolling our time, I I do want to ask you just clear the table right and and what is it about god that makes god real for uh, not just real but why do you believe you need god like what is it about god for you that's important it may seem like a very much like sky is blue question but i think you know i think that's a way that people understand like why god is necessary beyond the the cultural beyond the dutiful like why is he good news to you for you in particular, and why has he always been? I think the older I get, the more I realize that the good decisions that I made growing up in life uh, were him keeping me. Mm. Um, because uh, I've grown up and now I have grown up issues. And um, or, or made choices as a grown woman, um, that my parents couldn't make for me and, and I've made mistakes and, and grown from them. And I'm just like, shoot, this whole time I thought that I just had the grit for it. This, this is so, this is so cocky, but I really want to put that out there because, um, there's so much that we think that that we're taking credit for and we don't realize that he was like <laughs> <laughs> behind us and around us and blocking stuff and keeping this and that. And I just notice that the more that I um, involve him in my life and in everything I do, the better it all is. Mm. Um, and I, and that's, that's really just, you know, what I could say, there are like the rules of this world, which is that if you work hard for stuff, um, then, you know, good things happen for you. But that's not necessarily true. You know, I know people who are working harder than me that haven't had breakthrough in the industry, who have been working longer and harder than me. And this is no slight to them. I'm more so highlighting the aspect of God doing what he said he would do. Mm. You know, how do you explain? How do you explain that to me? You know, mm. you could say it's luck, but how is it luck if it's exactly what he said he would do? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, somebody explain that to me. And I, I'm just like, I know that God is real and I've experienced him in my life. I'm a very um, spiritual person, spiritually sensitive, I should say. Mm -hmm. And so I needed guidance and I needed um I needed, uh, I needed encounter. There were certain things that I needed, um, that God provided. And because I've been exposed to all of those things, I'm like, I, I can't not believe in God. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm like, I need to tell you what you already know is on my heart. I need to talk to you about this because mm -hmm. this bothered me or this made me, this caused me to question this and that. And I just ask him never in disrespect i'm sure there's sometimes pride in my heart but god's so humble and i'm just so thankful for him giving me the, what was the question again <laughs> no, no you 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 you're, you're speaking bars <laughs> you know it, it, am it, i answering it? Okay. yes you are answering I was it like, oh my god i'm on a rabbit trail right now oh why is god yeah why is yeah he, yeah i mean i just i just feel like as i as i go forward in life i'm like okay you just more and more you just you prove yourself Prove yourself to me. Mm -hmm. you, you have a, you know, I, I, I'll just say masterful because we know the master is a masterful way of communicating God in ways that I think brings guards down. Um, and it's mm. a way that people can understand. And so I, I say that obviously because it comes to the music and the lyrics, but I also think in just how you speak, I think this is going to bless a lot of people. Um, because you make it very mm. plain to say, you know, mm. um, this is why God is appealing to me. I, you know, I, I just can't take credit. Oh, wow. Like I thought it was all me. It was grit and 
I think that's the story, right? That's the, the pride of, you know, I've done it all myself and, you know, what got, you know, coincidence or the universe. I'm like, well, I mean, God created it. So I guess, you know, you know, it's, 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 it's all of these things. But I, I just think it's refreshing yeah. to to hear that, uh, you know, from you. As you're looking forward, what 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 do you have that's come like what what's ahead for you in the near future? I think obviously we know you're producing music and you're, you're putting these EPs out. You get out, you, but like what's ahead in terms of like this is something that God wants me to do before my time is done, type of thing. What's yeah. ahead in terms of the work you're doing? I know that He's calling me to communicate more outside of music. Um, I do have a master's in creative writing. Or that's out, that's not even a musical degree that has to do with storytelling. Mm-hmm. So you hit it on the nail when you said books, books, books. Um, and I want to be responsible with this moment and, and do all of those things. Um, that's ahead. I want to find a way to um, impact my community um, without feeling the pressure of letting everybody know what I did. Mm-hmm. And... Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying we all have a platform and I'm not, I don't care how anybody else does it, but (laughs) I'm like always thinking, I'm probably overthinking this, but I'm like, for me to get the best reward out of this whole thing is to do it and not let anyone know and just let it be seen by God and, and just work hard to change lives. And then there are other like business ideas that I have and I, you know. I'm excited about those things. I think there's there's also this like deep desire in me to see it full circle healing um, for blacks in the black culture. Um, for our narrative to no longer be just pain. I mean, that's always gonna be attached to it. But for our narrative to no longer be just like struggle, right? I I spend my days thinking, because I grew up in Treeport, where um, a lot of our, our group there were, are still oppressed in their minds. It's a mental slavery. And, um, and you meet people and kids in situations that are walking through things Although our relationship with God is not transactional, what they're walking through would cause them to feel like, is there God and does he even love me? And um, I, I, I want to see healing on that regard, but I also want to see financial healing there. Mm. You know, what, how, how can we stop um, TV production companies from making money off of black pain? Like I think about mm. these talk shows that bring on baby mamas and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just all the, and they're making so much money off of this narrative that we didn't create in its, in its beginning or initial stages. And it's, it's quite abusive. And I'm not in a place anymore where I want to blame anybody else. I think we can change this and it has to be us. Otherwise we're always going to look to another culture for help and think that it, you know what I'm saying? Yo, um, so anyway, no, this is, the, that's, it, I'm it, like so passionate about that. No, this is, this is great. This is that, this is that I, I, I am, I am, I'm agitated. This is the holy agitation, right? We talked about, you know, earlier to say like, not even just like, I could play that better or that should be better. It is just the, that's not right. And that's part of also a prompting to say it bothers you. It may not, it may not bother the, the person here, but it bothers me in a way that I think God is calling me to pay attention to it. And I think people, I think universally yeah. people can understand that. I think I call like blessed burden of seeing that, but it's also the God of Jubilee, the God of restoration. This is not an auxiliary. This is something that is important. And so I, I, you know, I, 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 there's so much you said, you know, but I I do think that you seeing this through, there's going to be a unique impact um, and a sizable impact for people in a way, but also the, the reality of how you spoke about giving to where only God knows and sees as though we forget Matthew's scripture about like, left hand, right hand, you know what I mean? but that's neither here nor there. Um, but, but I, I just, I appreciate you in that. Um, uh, I hadn't asked this question, but I got to have to ask this question before we go. Just ideal day, your day's cleared. What would be your ideal rhythm with God for that day? Right. You know, if his day's cleared, you yeah. really want to connect with God. 
just what is that ideal? Just walk us through that. What the sun up, sun down, what's it looking like? Yeah, it's not going to sound like the uh, Christian you're used to hearing. Oh, no, no. I, that day, to, I don't know who you think I am, man. I, I trust. I don't have no expectations. Tell me. <laughs> well, I already know that the first thing I'm about to say is not <laughs> what <laughs> what people would say is the ideal Christian day with the Lord. First of all, I do not wake up early on that day. I don't. <laughs> I'm not up in God's face. I'm not doing that. I, I, I rest um, and I wake up when I'm done baking in that bed. <laughs> I wake up and I'm fully rested and able to be there just with God, fully conscious and awake and aware. And um, I put, there's this uh, video on YouTube. There's like a bunch of videos, but it's just like instrumental worship. Um, oftentimes I can't focus on what I feel called to focus on in prayer. If there's like words to the songs, cause then I'm caught up in the revelation of the song and I'm declaring that. Um, and I, <laughs> yeah. right. Um, I, I am, you know, I have my tea and I'm just kind of walking around praying in the spirit. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but praying in the spirit, just talking to God, waiting on him. I might play on the piano and sing, cry. Um, and then I, I get to, you know, just read in the word and there's no force anything. That's why I say I'm not, if that whole day is the Lord's, then I'm not freaking waking up at 5 a.m. Because that for me would be a, 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 there's just like, okay, so there's a scripture in, um, in the message version of the Bible. And I don't have that Bible in particular, but I'll never forget the way the writer worded this. Uh, scripture, and I can't remember where it is, but he said, resting in the unforced rhythms of grace. Mm. And, and that just like stuck with me because I'm like, there's so many of us feel like God is on this set time table or time frame. Mm. And what they don't realize, and I just read this in a book was that before clocks were made, um, man went to bed with the moon and woke up with the sun and the average person got 11 hours of sleep. Then we created clocks, which were mastered by man. The sun's clock and the moon's time is mastered by God. But we took on a new master when we created the clock. And that was man, a more demanding master, someone with a ravenous um, appetite for more and greed and it has to be hustle and bustle and you if you don't hustle you ain't gonna get da, 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 da. and uh and you know nixon predicted that um because of the way that t technology was going that you know um what do you call it robots would be doing so much for us that we would have more time with our family and we would have more time to um, exist as human beings and take part in um, the lifestyle part and, and enjoy that. Well, that obviously didn't happen because we filled it with more. And um, so I'm just kind of in this moment to where I'm like, when I have a moment to do that, like I'm not, <laughs> mm. I'm not forcing anything. I want to rest in the unforced rhythms of grace. Mm. And if God, you know, wants me to get up early uh then hey you know i'm here for it and i can't say that i have every time he's woken me up at like three i haven't i'm not gonna say that i've been obedient there but um to me to me that whole all of that is a part of me being with god because of my life right now i'm traveling all the time so like all of that the sleep time the just walking or just reading and and then i'm gonna spend time with people uh, in that day that might be on the phone, but just talking about the Lord or talking about life. Cause he's in all of that. Like, we feel like he can only fit into the churchy stuff. And I feel like sometimes God's like, I'm bored. Like, Hey, there's so much more that I gave you to experience in life. And I need you to, to, that's like a part of the abundant life, right? Is you experiencing God and everything. And I don't know. I, 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 that so that day is not filled with a lot of, you know, hakamashunda, but it's filled with a lot of just like 
you know, just being with, like, being with God, you know, one of the things I realized in this moment in my life is just reading the word, even if I don't understand exactly what's happening, I notice, like, an instant calmness in my spirit, and for some people, that's putting on worship music, for, but for me right now, I notice it when I read. There's just something that happens in my brain, and I just, there's, like, a clarity that comes, and that's recent, and I'm just going to say this. Um, I love that it's recent and I love that it hasn't always been like that because that's like God. He doesn't want us to have an equation for life because an equ- that's not relationship, you know, he's like, okay, and now I'm going to, I'm going to switch it up so that you can understand that there's no like, do this, do that, do this. And then you're good. That it's, it's, it's this constant growth in your life and going deeper in God and him pulling back the layers and, and you feeling for a season of your life. Like I can't hear God with what I've, I've always done it this way. And for some reason I can't hear him and I feel far from him. And, and he's like, yeah, I want to extend your reach. I want you to reach because this, what I've given you has become your comfort zone and I need you to grow and you won't if you're comfortable. Um, so I'm very uncomfortable right now. Um, but I'm doing my best to embrace it. And um, but anyway, that's my day. <laughs> you, you, you were you were gone. You know, uh, the the Hakama thing had me laughing, but I was trying to hold it in not to interrupt you. Um, but <laughs> no, okay. But you were 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 speaking um, live. I think for the, for people who have this very military regimen, I'm looking at myself often very dutiful and i do the journal at this time i spend the time this i pray at this time i do this i water the plants come back i do this that's I work great out. it's just like but there's a view of just but but in this season god has been challenging me out of that and he's been pushing mm. me out of that to say you know it's kind of the pray without ceasing it's just not that it's just the it's the rhythm and so i i think that 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 especially on us ending in that space i think that's going to be a bomb for people a real bomb mm. um, because I, mm. I think that we're out of order in our rhythms. Um, I think people are burnt out on all ends. And some people are burnt out with God because they have limited God to that and that God can't be anymore. And so um, yeah. you are speaking the the way, the truth, the life you're speaking it. Um, though I, I, you know, this, I, I think this is, you know, like I appreciate you so much and, you know, you're, you're so dope. Um, and I thank you for giving us this gift of just letting us into your mind, your life, but, uh, but most importantly, just giving us a picture of your relationship with God and how you adore him and how you walk with him, but humbly recognize that none of us got it together. We're all trying to figure it out. Um, and this is beyond the gift that you give the world. But uh, I think this is the beauty of it. You know, as much time we talked about this, I think there's enough, there's more time that I'm just hearing in this conversation. Uh, just an adoration and a journey with God. Um, and I think in some sense, maybe that was just God winking at you and winking at, at me and winking at all of us around just like, he accepts you beyond your performance, beyond your gifts. You are exceptional. He gave you that gift. But there's so much more Thank you. um, that you're Amen. giving and there's so much more to give. And I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for that. Where do people find you online, offline? How, how do people connect with you? Woo, woo. Um, <laughs> you guys can follow me on uh, Instagram, I'm probably most present there right now on Instagram at Doe Jones Music. If they want to book me, they can go to my website at dojonesmusic.com. Um, YouTube is about to be popping. Okay. <laughs> we all, we all I getting mean, slow I, on the YouTube train. It's all good. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've been getting there my whole life. Anyways, can't wait to arrive. Um, yeah, but I, I post um, covers and I'm about to, I'm about to do more just like sharing from my heart on my YouTube, um, but I want to do it the right way. So anyway, you guys be on the lookout for that. And, and um, yeah. Yo, yo. That's it. That's it. Yo, we're co-laboring out here. So we we, pr- we continue to pray with and for yes. you. Um, we're for you. Thank I cannot you. wait to get that advanced copy of the book because we done talk about it. <laughs> so I'll keep you accountable. I'm going to send you some notes offline and make sure you do it. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. We love you, thank sister. You. And, and thank you for being faithful. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, take care.